Hey guys, it's Marty from OwingsArt.com and today I'm going to take a look at the Miguel Rios Leather Journal. This is a little, uh, by, I think it's about a four and a half by six inch journal. What's cool about this journal is a few things. One, it's got a leather cover on it. It's made with recycled leather, so this is leather that would have gone to waste or ended up in a landfill. And the folks in Spain re reuse the leather for the cover. It's also uh, got some really nice, it's got a riveted strap in it, so that's really nice and you can tell um, that there was some quality put into this. So I'm gonna test a number of different aspects about this sketchbook today, uh, including using a bunch of different kinds of media, even media it wasn't designed for, like watercolor and alcohol markers and things like that, just because I like to put every sketchbook through the paces. And I'm not gonna lie, you guys, I love sketchbooks. I use many of them. I filled dozens and dozens of them. Um, I just think they give you a place, a sense of time, and a sense of the person who used it, and uh, and they just kind of make every travel, every little adventure you have in life, whether it's mundane or a big adventure, just makes it more interesting to sort of catalog what you see around you. As an artist, uh, you're quite used to having good. Uh, a sketchbook with you probably if you're a sketcher. So like I said today I'll test graphite, ink, two different kinds of ink, permanent India ink and non-permanent sort of uh, uh, reactivatable ink. I'll also test a couple of different kinds of uh, markers uh, as I mentioned graphite and watercolor. So all of those things I'll put to the test today. So this is just a regular ink pen. This happens to be a Sakura uh, Micron. It's permanent ink, but um, this might actually be a Stettler. I, I apologize. This might be a, a Lumograph Stettler uh, ink pen. But at any rate, um, the ink bleeds through on some of these pages pretty easily. But um, I'll go through all of that in a minute. But uh, I tried to test, you know, a little swatch here and a little swatch there just to see what would happen. And you can see, like, you can see right through to the previous page here with the Copic markers. Uh, there's quite a bit of bleed through. Now, if you use the, and these are, um, you know, thinner pages. These aren't the big, heavy, thick pages that I usually like in a sketchbook. But if you were going to do writing and some light uh, pencil sketching in here, graphite or very light watercolor work, uh, you could get away with it. Additionally, what you can get away with in this little sketchbook, which I thought was pretty cool, was water-based markers because you can see with those Faber Castells. I didn't get a lot of bleed through. So that's good. I mean, you might not be able to work on the back side of that page, depending on how clean you like your paper. But overall, I think you could if you just used a water-based marker, graphite, and, uh, and stuck to that. Problem's gonna come in when you try to use an ink on this paper. So any kind of ink pen, I think is gonna tend to bleed through quite a bit, especially where you stop and leave the ink uh, tip setting there for a second. Oh, okay, on to a drawing demo. I thought I'd uh, do a little painting of a, a lake trout here just to demonstrate the watercolor in action here. And um, this is really fun. Actually putting the water on the paper kind of makes the fish look real. It's got that little scaly reflection uh, on the fish, which I thought was kind of kind of neat once I laid it down. And then when I added a little color, it kind of popped even more. So here I just have a light, uh, a real light uh, pencil outline of the fish and then the rest of it's gonna all be watercolor until later and then I'll just ink like an outline.
Now here I'm going to use the very uh, famous uh, Uniball UM153 white pen just for the little spots on the lake trout. And uh, yeah, that's kind of leaves a cool effect on it. And uh, just a little bit more graphite wash in here to add a little definition to the fins and some of the elements on this guy. Yeah, the watercolors are a lot of fun in this little sketchbook, but um, the pages are just a little thin for me. Now, that might not be your preference. And, you know, to each his own when it comes to sketchbooks, his or her own, um, you know, you kind of enjoy what you enjoy. And I just like a heavier, more substantial page. It just kind of feels better to me. But other people like the thinner page. And I think it's it just, you know, comes down to per personal preference, really, at the end of the day. So um, use what you like. But I like the sketchbook overall, and I really like the idea of the recycled leather cover. There's nothing like a leather-covered sketchbook. No, Moleskin makes great books, and they make great sketchbooks, and I use them all the time. And I use a Pentelic sketchbook quite a bit, and others, other brands. But um, when it comes to uh, these smaller sketchbooks, I think leather is just really a great way to go. It's so durable and once it's worn in there's a bit of patina to the leather. It's just it's very classic and it kind of stays with you like an old friend. Well let's take a little closer look at these. So here I've got the Copic marker, the Faber-Castell pit markers, some graphite and if I turn the page you can see where the Copics they basically come right through the page that's an alcohol-based marker is going to do that on a lot of different papers. Only the thickest of papers will resist like a tremendous amount of bleed through. Now, on the Faber-Castells, not so much. But here you can, I was just pointing out where it bled through three full pages. So, well two anyway. Uh, they bled through the back side of this page and again onto the next page. So, uh, that's not great. But again, uh, the notebook really isn't designed for that or this journal. For the indie ink and the permanent ink I did have significant bleed through and I mentioned that uh, a little while ago in the video. Especially if you stop with the pen tip on the paper you'll see bleed through. On the watercolor I was a bit surprised. If you don't saturate the paper I think watercolor is okay on this little notebook. The one thing though you will notice is there's going to be a lot of like warping and buckling of the paper underneath but who cares you're just going to shut the book and and it's going to press itself flat anyway over time inside the notebook. But um, if you're a stickler about it, you might, uh, you might want to look at a heavier notebook. So here's the ratings overall uh, on a scale of 1 to 10. 1 being really the poorest ever, 10 being the greatest. I love the cover. It was good. I gave it a 7. The paper is just uh, a little bit above average. It's opaque, but for me, I like a heavier paper. Now, so that just comes down to personal preference. Mixed media, about a four. Not great for mixed media. For dry media, I think it does fine. It's just the paper's a little thin for me. Um, the binding is sturdy, but it's not individually stitched, so that's another drawback on my side. It's really got a nice feel to it, I think mostly because of the leather. Overall value, you know, when you consider that it's leather, uh, it's a good value. Overall, I give it a 6.5. It's a decent sketchbook, and if you like the thinner type paper, you'll probably really enjoy uh, this sketchbook. Well, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. I love uh, to get comments, questions, anything like that as well. And don't forget to share the video if you enjoyed it. Well, thanks for stopping by, guys, to take a look at this sketchbook with me. It was fun, and, uh, well, that's it. This has been Marty for WingsArt.com. So long for now. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.